In this case, again, when this patient uh, started to progress on his hormonal therapy, his PSA rose rapidly. That's one of the indications of somebody who's going to develop sort of overt metastatic disease. So when his PSA got up to 15 with a rapid PSA doubling time, that was a good indication to do scans. And again, he shows evidence of new metastatic disease in his bone in a CT scan. At that point in time, he's relatively asymptomatic uh, with uh, metastatic uh, disease, primarily in his, uh, in his bones. His treatment options at that point include uh, secondary hormonal therapy with drugs like abiraterone or enzalutamide, as well as immunotherapy with a drug like Cipulosil T. In this case, this patient, again, had a relatively rapid course. Uh, a couple years after his, uh, his surgery, his disease you know, rapidly rose by PSA. His hormonal therapy response was relatively brief. You could argue this guy has a, a fairly aggressive course of disease, and yet, even so, being minimally symptomatic with uh, bone-only metastatic disease, his life expectancy is still probably in the two to three year range. To me, that's still a reasonable patient to consider for Cipulosil T. To me, the best patient for Cipulosil T is the patient with low volume and relatively low PSA. In retrospective series, that's shown the longest absolute benefit associated with CIP-T. Um, when we give Cipulosil T, we're essentially giving the patient an immune stimulant. It's an autologous cellular uh, therapy that uh, works to activate the patient's own immune system to be, overcome tolerance and to regulate uh, and recognize the prostate cancer. It doesn't work quickly, so in many cases we'll administer Cipulosil T and then we'll quickly move on to another therapy. But that doesn't mean it's not working. It continues to work in that patient over that next two to three year period of time. So in this patient, we would have considered adding Cipulosil T with those first early rises in PSA up into that sort of 15 range. Once he got up to 145 and was becoming more symptomatic, that window for Cipulosil T is probably closed. So for this particular case, it's a relatively narrow window in which we would have considered the therapy. So when we administer abiraterone, we, uh, and prednisone, will do so in the context of castration-resistant prostate cancer. That's defined by maintaining a low testosterone level, less than 50 typically, uh, and still having evidence of disease progression, typically with a rise in PSA, but maybe changes on bone scan or CT as well. Uh, all the studies that have been done with abiraterone, prednisone in this setting that have led to its FDA approval have been done so in patients that have maintained that castrate level of testosterone. So we don't really know if uh, abiraterone prednisone will work as well if we don't maintain that low testosterone level. And the best way to do that is to keep the patient on uh, their LHRH agonist if that's what they're on or if they've had surgical castration uh, or whatever method we're using to maintain that low testosterone. It's possible that off of those therapies, the patient's testosterone levels will still stay low and we can get by with just abiraterone and prednisone, but that's not recommended, and the on-label use for that drug is with concomitant uh, androgen suppression therapy.